I'm here with Oystein of Borgnagar to talk about their latest record, Fall, out February 23rd on Century Media Records. First of all, thank you very much for taking the time to chat with me about the record. Um, how does it feel to be so close now to that moment in time when everybody can listen to the whole record? You know, it's it's always a kind of exciting. You know, it's it's kind of uh, you know we have been working so damn hard on this album, so it's it's um, it's kind of uh, yeah, it's a mix of relief. It's a mix of kind of a little bit you know. Uh, excited about you know all the reactions and stuff like that but but it's also very kind of satisfying you know uh thing you know because every album is a cycle you know and it and, you know so damn much work so it's it's awesome to get it out there and uh, you know hopefully some people will like it as well that would be nice i, I was going to post something on facebook uh, about how good this album is but then i saw that our friend gunner had said already that the album is magnificent uh, so I was like, okay, if he talked already, uh, you don't need me to say anything because his voice carries a lot more weight. Uh, how do you take these compliments from, from folks that are really enjoying this album, folks that obviously listen to a lot of music that have a huge knowledge? Uh, how does it feel to you? I don't know. You know, it feels good. I, I it, it's awesome. You know, and and you know, it's it's, it's such a because you know when when I start out making music for a new album and, uh, and stuff like that, when we kind of start the planning and all that, it's it's kind of a it's a steep mountain to climb. There's a lot of work, you know, and stuff like that. So eventually, when you reach the top, you know, it's it's so kind of you know getting this kind of reward from good friends and or you know good words back it's it's extremely satisfying and and um what can i say it's um give me a sense of doing something right in this world maybe <laughs> <laughs> you know but it, it's very it's very simple though i mean it's almost like a little bit childish of course it's cool i mean it's awesome that people actually like you know the music i'm i'm sitting here alone basically doing you know with my guitar and and kind of playing around and in all that stuff you know it's 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 um it's also a bit weird you know because it's the whole the whole at least for me the whole approach of of my music is very kind of almost intimate in a sense so it's a kind of oh everything is going on to this world and it's it's not my child only anymore you know <laughs> it's it's amazing and if people like it like Gunnar and you and you know I've talked with a lot of journalists that is really into this new album and it's like what can I say? It's amazing. Thank you, guys. It's it's uh, awesome. Uh, I, I'm going to tell you right now, even before I ask you any other question, this is my favorite album from you guys. I honestly like it. It's hard to say that when you guys have released 12 records, this being the 12th album. But this album is just magnificent across all. It doesn't matter if you look at it from a design point of view, structure, sound, experience, vocals, lyrics. There's no flaws on this record. It's just one of those albums that you press play without even noticing you're at the end of the record and you're like, okay, I, I got to go back again to the beginning because it just doesn't, I don't feel like I had enough of it. And considering that's almost an hour in length, you would feel like you would get enough of it, but it doesn't leave you feeling full. You know, it's it's hmm. a great experience. Yeah, and I, I'm very happy you say so because, you know, my intention of making music, um, I feel more like I'm kind of a musical adventurer rather than a musical entertainer. So so my kind of might sound a little bit cheesy, the whole thing, but, but my approach to music is that I rather want to, you know, invite people into a kind of musical journey more than being just standing in front of you playing some music, if you get my point. Um, so, 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 you know, it's, it's, um, yeah. You know the the approach that that you know if, if this holds something for the listener more than just um, an hour of entertainment, you know, of, of boredom or whatever it is, it it gives people something, an experience, and and kind of emotion or a, you know, all those things is something that I really try with the music to make you know invite people into this this little musical universe that we are kind of dealing with. So yeah, that's that's cool. So taking taking part of your word that you said journey, I thought this album, I mean, you guys do that on every record, really creating a sense of path, a sense of journey from the first all the way to the last song. But how do you manage the singularity that each song provides with the overall big picture of what you want the record to feel like? Is that an easy uh, thing to, to work with? 
I would say both yes and no. I mean, in, in, in theory, it sounds kind of difficult. But for me, you know, I've I've been doing this for such a long time. I've been doing this since I was 16 years old. I've been sitting around with a guitar, fiddling around, play, recording and, and making songs kind of. So it feels kind of natural to me. It, sometimes it takes a bit of time to get into the writing zone or my creative bubble. But once I'm in the in the bubble, it it just feels as the most natural thing in the world, to be honest. And 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 I I try to not plan too much. Of course, we do our scratches. I do my demos. We had some you know lyrics, of course, and we have some working titles on the album. But to me, it's also very important to keep keep something, you know, doors open for 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 the for the process. I I am a extremely kind of always maybe a little bit nerd on that but but i've always been very into process of things i i find the documentary how they made lord of the rings much more interesting than than actually the movie lord of the rings as an example so i just love the process of things and and in this setting with this band you know it's it's of course we have some ideas we have some guidelines and all that stuff um uh, but but we we i I try as far as possible to just keep things moving until we deliver the master, basically. Um, everything is kind of moving a little bit around throughout the whole process. So I, I'm the more I'm kind of doing this, the more I kind of mature being a musician and, and, and a lyrical writer, I will also try to kind of incorporate a more kind of marry the, the the scope of being a producer in all this. I do a lot of other, you know, uh, mixing and mastering and stuff like that for other bands and stuff. And I also try to, you know, because that is something that frustrated, at least in the early days, a lot, a lot of frustration regards to that. Because if you're a painter, you can basically do your painting, put it on a wall, and the people would see what you have done. And this is your stuff. This is your name on it. But if back in the days when you were a musician, you, you had an ambition, you had an idea about the music, but you depended so much on the budget you had, the studio you used, or the engineer had a good or bad day, you know. Um, so I've since since the early days, I've been kind of trying to get a more and more firm grip, grip on, on, on the productional side of it as well. Uh, trying to, you know, marry this it's kind of producer's back perspective a little bit. So... I spent tons of hours. I usually say, for me, it takes like a few weeks to write the songs, but it takes can take a year arranging the songs and and kind of doing the finish, you know, all the finish touches to it. So it's it's. Uh, I spend a lot of time um, trying out different guitar sounds, how to mix things. You know, there is a lot of ways of mixing stuff in general. Techniques, for example. So I try to, you know, all this this stuff, and and then I do some decent mixes or demos, and of course, not not uh, to forget, you know, Jens Bogren did a fantastic job on this album mixing it. Of course, based a little bit on my or inspired by by um, by my. Um, demo mixes but he was able to he's able to understand the music the flavor all the detail all the texture all that stuff we are 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 um, searching for in a way and and you know i don't say too much to jens before he start his work but of course i send him the demos but but the things i kind of usually says is that you know i want this to sound like like the nature i want this to sound like almost like you walk through a forest or walk to a mountain or something like that. So it should be a lot of textures, should be a lot of things going on. And if you walk the same route the next day, you should have a new experience. You know, mm -hmm. you should see and hear different things maybe the next day. And the third day, maybe even you see something else that you haven't seen before, even though they have walked the same route many, many times. I think that is something that, at least in my mind, brings, brings uh, what can I say, um, it makes the music deeper it makes it's make music to become a grower it's it's something that lingers on for a way more longer time i would say in this record i thought you guys achieved that extremely well uh you, you guys created an album that 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 has room the sound has room it breathes uh but it, just because it has room and it breathes it still feels very textured i, I there are certain songs that i had to listen to it every time that i listened to it i discovered a, a new texture a new layer mm -hmm. of sound either that be an orchestration or a little guitar melody that didn't really come across the first time but the second time i picked it up uh, mm -hmm. so you, you guys created a, a record that i felt also had a lot of ebbs and flows it's not an, a record that stays stagnant 
from beginning to end, there's there's growth and then there's a, a, a valley. Then there's growth and then there's a valley. It's, it's constantly moving. Uh, mm. Does this make for you a, a more engaging experience when you have this many moving pieces? The sound is not just moving up and down, but it's also moving lateral? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, I've always, you know, I had this kind of, again, maybe weird philosophy about music that, you know, it should somehow mirror life life in itself you know life is kind of complicated life is there is a lot of facets to life you know there is there is rainy days there is sunny days there is tragedies going on there is happiness going on there's love there is hate all this you know this kind of ups and downs and and sideways for that sake you know in life is something that i always seek to 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 push into the music somehow this this kind of this the complexity of 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 of, of life in, in a sense you know uh, the complexity of a forest and as i said i use that as a picture sometimes as a, or a way of trying to describe it that i want you know I, this is a trail i kind of invite you to walk i want you to see this one but the first day you walk there you will see something you will get kind of the first day or first time experience or whatever it is but the second time maybe you will see something else and the third day and so on and so forth you know, that is life. Life is not static, you know. So I, I try to, you know, think in in many ways, but but I try to think that, you know, how to make music come to life in a sense, you know, how to, to make music living in a sense. Because in my opinion, music is such a human artifact, or, or it's not just an opinion. It's a, it's a, it's a fact. You know, my, my cats don't bother about my music. You know, birds in the forest don't really bother about my music. It's a very human thing listening to music so so i you know i in my opinion also as a music fan i love the bands the music i adore is the music that has this this complexity and 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 space and and greatness of life in a sense you know um it might sound a little bit weird but but uh, you know that's at least the mentality behind it and then of course it's hours and hours of hard work and a lot of sacrifice and all that to to achieve all this and equipment and so on and so forth. But but the mentality behind it has always been very important for me. And since day one, I you know, I wanted to make this this musical bubble of mine that is independent from everything else. It's independent from any musical trends at the moment or you know, whatever is going on in the scene. So I've never compromised on the musical, you know, music we have done. I've always seek to do, you know, find my own way in this this wild line, landscape, so mm -hmm. to speak. And whether we have succeeded or not, I don't know, but but uh, I hope so. I think you have. And you, you mentioned something interesting because the album is complex. It's easy to tell how complex it is. But for the listener, it also feels very simple. You, you guys yep. simplified or at least made it feel like certain processes were simplified. For example, I felt like this album used progressive elements more in a subtle way and allow the black metal side of the band to come in a little bit harder so that you can mm. feel a little bit of more of that nature of that of, of that harshness the beauty and harshness of nature that simplicity mm. of sound that hides all that complex aspect do you do you uh, do you expect this album to reach a new fan base because of that like i feel like this is an album that's going to connect with the past fans but also going to open doors for new fans yeah, that would be cool. I mean, you know, I, I, I tend to don't reflect too much about those stuff because from my experience, it's like it's like the weather cost for tomorrow. It's it's you know, the weather cost says sunny weather tomorrow, but it might even rain, you know. You never really know. And and that is my experience also. I remember back in the day we did the album called Archaic Course, and that was the first time, that was the third album we did, and we was in Germany, and there was a bunch of journalists in the studio, I remember listening session back then and stuff. And the record company, everything, everybody was like, yes, this is going to be a big, you know, breakthrough stuff and whatnot. That's probably the album that sold the least, even though it got seven of seven points in Rattle Hammer and stuff like that. So, you know, my point is that this 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 genre, this music, this this thing we are doing, you cannot really predict like like you have a feeling, you have a notion where things are going, but but you cannot really predict how it will people will react on it but but of course i have a good feeling I, I honestly believe that as you say that the old fans as new fans will will enjoy this one um and maybe we will you know reach a couple of new new guys as well i don't know but but uh let's see did, did, um, did the success of true north uh influence you in any way when it came to creating fall 
Yeah, at least for me, if, if you know, if, if talking a little bit personally, yes, because I think, you know, that I think when we did Winter Thrice, that was like when I really started to, you know, start to, mentally speaking, tried to approach this as also a producer of the band in a sense, you know. And on True North, I felt that we, okay, this, this worked really well. And and this time around when we did 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 the fall, I just felt that okay, um, I'm just gonna build on top of this and make you know it better and you know just expand everything and use all of my no no knowledge in regards to you know sound production, what works, what doesn't work, and there is a lot of mentality into music, how to trick your mind. I, I should probably not say this, but in in mixing there is a lot of tricks you can do in order to you know to tickle your ear or wake your brain up again we all know by scientific fan uh, by uh, sci science that scientific facts i was supposed to say that you know a, a, a human brain usually have a focus point on about two minutes or something on a song that's why usually a radio hits and the big songs in the world is like two three minutes because everybody knows that you know you don't pay attention to the song for more than those minutes unless you add, you know, you know, the spies, the, the 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 things that keeps your brain working, you know, keep your brain a little bit uh, awake in a sense. So yes, I, you know, I, 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 um, yeah, <laughs> I, I guess that's my answer somehow. But but yeah, I, I, I felt that we had really something going on True North uh, on the inside. I mean, in the sense that making music, the production side of it, how we. The grip we had on the production how it turned out and the same thing we kind of did with fall we we had the kind of i don't know how you know the self-security to yeah let's do it but just do it much better this time around i That's felt you guys on this record also I, I think this is the strongest album from you guys when it comes to the lyrical content uh the vocal performance based on the lyrical content and how those two then match the sound I don't. I don't think there's a better album from from this band when those three elements are completely in unison with one another. Uh, yeah. How difficult is to bring all of those three elements together for for this to be the final result? You know, it's a, again a lot of a lot of many hours of work, of course, and a lot of many hours of discussions, many hours of back and forth, and and of course, you know. Um, also, we had an interesting process this time around because we, 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 you know, um, Elron uh, Cantor did a cover on this this album, and that was actually the first time around we worked with a, I would say, a true artist because that's what it is. He is a brilliant, brilliant artist, and you know, we we I talked with him for a couple of hours, and and you know, before the, some months before for the release of the album, and we basically talked about you know everything else than music to be quite honest of course we discussed music but we did you know learn to know each other you know being daddies both of us and you know life how to approach you know and we enjoy you know had a fellow common interest in nature and all that stuff and and um so we had some at that time we had of course the demos ready we had the lyrics ready and we had some working titles on the album but uh, but once i got the cover from aleron um i just okay this album has to be called Fall. So that was kind of a twist to our process this time around that, you know, we, we when we piece all these puzzles together, we usually, uh, the, the 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 album title is the final piece of the puzzle to us. And it also was this time around, but, but this time we actually, the outcome of the cover kind of, um, what can I say? Uh, nailed the, the title of the album. So, so it's, it's um, yeah, it was a cool process of it. The guitar sound is phenomenal. D did you tweak, change, add something? Uh, and not to say that in True North and previous records, the guitars didn't sound good. But I thought on this album, they were a little bit more detached from everything else. So you're you're able to feel it. Uh, you can you can taste the, the guitar sound a little bit better. D did you change anything? No, not really. I mean, I did my. I of course, I'm I'm always trying to improve in my studio here. So I I did. I have amp and you know all the plugins, all you know what people use. So yeah, I spent quite a lot of time trying to nail the guitar sounds. But that being said, I I have a quite strong feeling that Jens had reamped the guitars himself. You know, he 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 do do whatever he want to do, and he is allowed to do so. So I'm not sure how many of my original guitar sound he still actually have on the album. To be quite honest with you, but but I know there is a few uh, that is actually mine, which I produced here. 
Um, but again, I think you know it's it's it. I think that should be you know that that's Jens Bogren's you know magician. I mean that his. Uh, absolutely astonishing way of of dealing with sounds i don't know where he come from and what what's going on but he is just he is this insane way of approaching music I, i've never i've worked with a lot of people in studio mixes and engineers and all that i i still i also do that myself but the way jens work with music is just beyond anything i've seen before he when he's sitting in the studio working on stuff, I'm just fascinated. It, it seems like he's just sitting around on his screen drawing and it just sounds better and better. And, hey, can you just do this and that? And he does that plus another bunch of cool things, you know, in the same run. He's absolutely off another planet, I would say, when it comes to sound. So, so I'll, you know, he he's, he's to be credited for that, I guess. And also... I think a little bit because we, we took a little bit of a move and Jens told me, that that we this time around we actually did something we haven't done before in the same manner at least that i'm on the right side of the album my guitar is in the right side and your stand the guitarist the, the other guitarist in, is on the left side so there is always kind of different guitars uh when you listen to the album there is always uh two different independent guitars working that makes the the whole you know sound picture more moving in a sense you know it it kind of yeah the flavor changed much more i think that was a brilliant brilliant idea because yeah, usually we have like stereo guitars we had two guitars of so everything stacked up you know and have this wall of guitar sound but this time we rather or jens rather approach it in a little bit different way i believe than than last time so maybe yeah. that's what gives it that sense of more freedom from from the rest of the sound it feels a little bit more more loose if you will, it does. It, it's yeah. not as compact with everything else that is happening. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm completely. I think that's 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 the reason. Some of the reason, at least, because it it makes it doesn't really. You know, it doesn't. This is kind of technical, though. It it doesn't really change the songs or anything like that. It doesn't. You know, you don't lose the power or the brutality or whatever you you know want. But 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 it it just makes the the whole stereo image kind of movement in a, in a different way in a sense it kind of pulls and gets to to lie gets to yeah yeah, yeah it creates a lot more movement uh what, one last question for you i'm gonna have the pleasure of of seeing you guys live at inferno this year i'm yeah. super excited uh because the last time you guys toured in north america you didn't play toronto there was an issue at the border uh let's not talk about that but it, there was an issue so i'm finally getting to see you guys live and i get to see you guys in your home country so uh, what can I expect coming to Inferno for the first time and seeing you guys perform? Extremely, extremely expensive beer, I, you can expect. I, I, can uh, I don't drink beer, so that I'm okay. <laughs> okay. Then you're good. Then you're good. Now, I don't know. I don't know. When people ask me, you know, questions like this, you know, we do the best we can. We, we, we will, of course, play some new songs from the new album, and it will be a kind of a totally new set list from, from what we had back when we did the U.S. tour with the Rotten Christ. So there will be a couple of new songs and um, well, we will do the best we can to make a good atmosphere and uh, yeah, invite you into this musical journey we try to get going. I'm sure you guys are going to do a phenomenal job. I'm looking forward to the festival, to the trip and to seeing you guys finally getting to see you guys live specifically coming from this album. Uh, this album is is just outstanding. I, I The first song that we we checked out on, the, on our YouTube channel was Summits. And uh, I said when we did that video that this was the best song from you guys that I've ever heard. Uh, I remember saying that, and now I can, and I, and now I feel like this is the best album you guys have ever done. It's just a phenomenal, phenomenal record, and hard to say that considering how good True North was. But this album, for me, it, it hit home a little bit better. Like I, I felt, I felt immersed in it, and uh, and immersed in it for the whole journey. So absolutely phenomenal record. Thank you, sir. It means a lot. I mean, it's it's so you know, what can I say? It's awesome, and and I'm so happy you like it. And um, yeah, I I, uh, I wish you guys nothing but success because this album is incredible. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, I'll I'll see you in Norway. I don't drink beer, but I'll buy you one. That's a deal. All right. <laughs> Take care. See ya. Take care, man. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>